Oh, yes. <clears throat> Where's Rachel? Where is she? Where's you, Harvey? Where, where did you put her? Where did Harvey put Rachel? Hello. Hello. You're watching Nerdish. Nerdish. I lost my shoe. You gotta put your shoe back oh, on. Oh, that go the oh, no. Very good. What are we doing here? Well, we do SAT, ACT prep for everyone. Yes. And the question is not where is Rachel, but when. 8 to 9.30 p.m. That's what Rachel is. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Watch it. Just see what it's like. It's for free. All week long. You can ask us questions like where's Rachel and what you do with Rachel and where is Harvey Dent. They're both studying for the SAT. It's a very important test if you want to go to college or university. Nice. I should have said university first because it rhymes. Ah, ah. Oh, oh, that's Catwoman. That's so okay. Oh, I think we know Catwoman because we're Batman. We are in business. We're making tons of so much questions, questions right now. So many questions. Hello, oh no. <gasps> <laughs> yes. Sorry, oh no. Hello, oh no. Yes, and then no. no what, yes. what are you talking about over there? Telling Brendan how much it rained. Oh. Or is it raining? And I yeah. said yes and no. If I need an umbrella or not. Hey, robot. What's up? You're there. Hodo and robot. Those are the big two right there. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Hands you can't up. tell them to put their hands down in class. We're on stream, Brendan. Brendan. They have to ask questions. You, well, yeah, you don't get to ask questions. No, but if their hands are down, how are they asking questions? Yeah, you you keep saying stuff. <laughs> you keep saying stuff. Oh jeez. All right, guys. This is a big day. Uh, we're gonna cover volume and surface area with you know a surface because um, we're gonna cover it, get it, and uh, Levi's gonna be doing apostrophes. But first, <laughs> preposterous. But robot dancer says, "OMG, Brendan." Oh, hey, hold on. Can, may I? You yes, you may. You remember, you remember this guy? Here he is. Oh, hi. Hey, it's robot putting my socks on. He's putting his socks on. Because Brendan's personal life is vibrant right BPL. now. BPL. I'm allowed to have one. Kind yes, of, yeah, sometimes. Finally. Don't walk off. I'm, I, I'm looking at this. You're fine. You just entertain them. Show, hey them, show them the business. Da, 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 there we go. Da, da, da. That's all I got anymore. That's, <laughs> that's all right. Hey, right he only talks in monosyllabic sounds. He doesn't da, 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 da. any longer. Scan man. Yes. Scan man. All right, all right. Levi, how do I... Uh... Wait, wait. Are we doing robots questions? Or are you yeah. doing... I thought you were going to teach stuff. I think well, it's I perfect. Will, but no, don't move it. It's perfect. Yeah. No, it, no. It's perfect. Block man. It's probably what robot looks like. It's just like some forearms and then a list of channels. Absolutely. I know it's like it's How just perfectly. Hold on. Hold on. Alt. As you drag stuff. Wait. What do you want to do? I want to get this to the part of the screen I want. Yeah. Alt and then drag the edges. Alt. You mean like? There you go. Alright. Uh, that was a bad segue. I'm out. And Sorry, he's out. 
Go get them, Brendan. You got that one out of the way for tonight. I, you're welcome. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. Summoning. Summoning yourself. Yes. To leave me no. Dude. All right. Wait, Let's study that. What? Dude, leave the cropping to me. What do you mean? I love the cropping. It's crop. my job. It's not your job. I do it like it's my jobs. jobs. All you right. Get, you gotta get paid for it. Absolutely. What do we got here? What do we, we got, got here? We got the triangle and the figure above has side lengths. Make it big, Levi. Yep. All right. Side lengths 3, 4, and 2x. Which of the following is not a possible value oh, shoot. of x? I see robot. Right there? Yeah, the little mouse above triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's robot. That's robot right there. Yeah. That's adorable. We got a picture of robot. That's what it looks like? Yeah, well, that's what he looks like. That's what she looks like. All right. Well, it, he, she, they, them, the mouse. Is it multiple people? Yes. It's a mouse. Oh, robot's a mouse. Yeah. I didn't know that. All robots are mice. Yeah. That's why the plural of robot is robite. Get, what? Right? Robite? No. Yeah, bird. What? Are you going to do this one? Yeah, I'll do this one. Okay. Robot. They say which the following. Uh, I'm not seeing any following. Did you give us answers here? Let me check. Maybe I just screwed this up. Um, no, it does not look like you gave us answers. So uh, I'll tell you what I think. There's a range of values that X could be, and we can talk about that, and then you could just use that information to tell, you can look at the X values and realize what it can't be. All right, so what this has to do with is called the triangle inequality theorem. And the triangle inequality theorem tells you how large a third side could be, or a, you know, a third side, how small it could be. Um, and here's how it works. Let's say that you had an angle, and two sides. So let's say you had a side that was 10, a side that was five, and you have this angle here, and that angle is flexible. You can open it and close it. And let's say you got like a rubber band here. So this, this third side is just gonna get longer and get shorter as you open and close this angle. If you want that third side to be as long as possible, you wanna open this angle as much as possible. You wanna open it so it's just about 180 degrees. I'm gonna draw it a little bit clo you know, more close than 180. But it, you know, it's basically almost a straight line. If you have almost a straight line, then the distance you're gonna have to go to connect these endpoints is gonna be pretty much 15, all right? As soon as that angle is 180 degrees, that distance is 15, but it's no longer a triangle. So it's gotta be a little bit smaller than 180 degrees, which means this third side is gonna be a little bit smaller than 15. So our overall inequality is if you have two sides, your third side needs to be less than the sum of those two sides. We have five and 10, our third side cannot be 15 or greater. It's gotta be less than 15, okay? So, 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 let's look at this for a sec. We're talking about X, all right? It looks like two X is our largest side. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say it. You know, a lot of people wanna stop me from speaking my mind, yeah, right? But two yeah. X looks yeah, like yeah. it's the largest side. So if we put this into the inequality form, we're gonna have three plus four has to be greater than two X, all right? A little bit of simplifying, and then we divide by two, and we get 3.5 is greater than x, or the way we usually write x is less than 3.5. All right, that is an upper limit on x. I remember x equals five for the answer. Right, 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 right. X has to be less than 3.5. Five would be too big, which is why it cannot be five. Um, there is another part of this theorem which would give you how small x could get, because there is a limit to that as well. Um, Levi, do we have to go over that or no? It's, it's the same, I mean, the idea just holds. It's, you know, you're always looking at the two shortest sides. So you, you want, so if 2x is either, it can be in the middle, and then you know it's going to be between 3 and 4 in this case. Are you just, just defining what x is? Okay. Um, and then it's, what would you say, it's, it has to be less than 7. Yeah. And it has to be less than, then, then that's the biggest it could be. Now the smallest it could be would mean it's the smallest side. So that means that three and two x would be the smallest side. So three and two x has to have to be greater than four because that's now the biggest. You oh. figure out that that way. Yeah, I think our green and blue don't look different enough, which is sad. You that's don't fine. Think so why can't it exceed three point five? Because if you look at this triangle I drew, if you exceeded fifteen, then these two sides would not be able to hold it anymore. These two sides, if you open up the angle as much as possible, will only ever span a length of 15. I made this triangle up, by the way. It's not that one. This is, this is the Brady triangle, all right? Your third side can't be larger than 15. Does that make sense? Because it can't be larger than 15, the inequality theorem says you have your two shorter sides, 
You sum those together, your third side cannot be larger than those two sides because then the sides of the triangle would not connect. You could not create a closed shape because it's larger than 180. N no. Um, if, uh, let me give you an example. Um, let's say that you had uh, the side lengths. Here we go. Levi's got a nice side there. If this is your one side, yes. your longest side. And make a really short one and another really short one. Yeah, and then you have two more sides. And you need to get this side to make a triangle, right? You need to go up and then you need to go back down, right? But if you aren't big enough, like let's say this is 10 here, then if this guy is 5, this guy has to be bigger than 5. Because if these two guys, if these two lines that you're going to draw, so this guy and then this guy here, those guys... If they are five and five, they'd have to lay flat to reach there. But then you no longer have a triangle, you have just a line because mm -hmm. the sides are all on top of each other. So to have, to have a little bit of a bump to make the skinniest triangle ever, these two sides have to be at least, or sorry, greater than 10. They have to be greater than 10. Does that make sense? Always, the two small sides, whatever this is, 5.1 or 5 5.0001, they just have to be bigger than the biggest side when put together. Otherwise, you can't have a triangle because the sides don't bump up. Can I? Uh, yes, I want to throw something else yeah. onto this. So okay. if this third side was, let's say, two, there is no way this triangle could exist, right? You can change these angles as much as you want. You probably want to close this angle up so it's almost flat. You want this angle to you know, be trying to reach for this. You're never going to get there. So there are, there are triplets of side lengths that just cannot form a triangle. That's where the inequality theorem comes from because there's side lengths that you just can't have because you're never going to be able to connect to the other two sides you have. Robot, what are your thoughts? Tell us your thoughts, robot. Water. Oh, I you understand. understand. Good. Okay, good. All right. Very good. Throw my question? Ah, uh, maybe. Are we just not teaching stuff? We're just going to do robot stuff? That's fine. I don't mind. I mean, no one asks for service area and volume. Like, That's let's true. do it. Well, you asked me if you could do it, and I said, okay. Yeah, but who am I? I'm no one. You're not one. Well, that's, yeah. I'm a nobody. Yeah. So, like, let's... I haven't I'll... looked at robots next question. We'll do our stuff when we run out of this stuff. Okay. If... If we ever. It's just a beautiful repository of questions. What if that's all they really were? What if it's not a human? Robot. We've done a we've done these questions together, so I'm excited. Yes, Where's robot. The darn. Give us give us suggestions for concept reviews. That sounds great. Oh, it sounds so good. We live to serve. We do. The Lord. And we serve to live. I guess. Well, if you're into that sort of thing. I don't. Eh. Okay. Here's our question. Hey, look at I like these. These are always fun. I'm a bot that generates math quest. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Except <laughs> the AP Lang test tomorrow. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's a scary test. What do you want to talk about on it? That thing's hard. Uh, I would say just generally, don't be worried about getting stuff wrong. That test is so hard. Those questions are so hard. So if you're really, really stuck on a question, take your best guess, move on. You want to do the, the basic questions first, and if you get four hard ones on a passage, just keep going. Um, SAT passages are way easier than AP Lang. Woo! Is, is your are you missing classes where they're prepping people for the tests? For, the, for that test specifically? Which pair? Oh, wait. Is there more to this? Is there more to this? No. Oh, the answers are elsewhere, I assume? OK, well, we'll get to that. Um, all right. Yeah, just in, and just in general, I missed school. I caught, pneum caught pneumonia. Do you know the songbird? He caught pneumonia and ha ha, he died. Ha ha, he died. Ha ha, he died. Is that the one that you sang just now? Yeah. 
I've heard that yeah. song. You have such skills of, of synergy and synthesis, Bird. What? It's crazy. What are you talking I'm about? I just remember what just happened now, which is oh. better, more than I can say about myself. Oh, oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, cool, Robot. So, um, let, let's talk about this guy. It, what, this is, this is, we have talked about this. I think the three of us, me, you, Hono, <laughs> have talked about this. Also, it seems like possibly one other person is watching, which is fine. You're left out. But this is no solutions. What do we know about no solutions graphically? This is, we, no, it's not on screen. No solutions. What do we know to be true if we know that we're looking for something that has no solutions? Same slope, different y-intercept, because that means they're parallel, so they never cross. So that system of equations never crosses, so no solutions. There we go. Yes, you said that. I just said it four times confusingly. So what do we need to figure out with these two equations here? Give me a... Oh, boy, what's happening? Stop it. What's happening? Who knows? What's happening? Okay. So yes, they are parallel. So let's figure that out. We want to put them in y equals mx plus b form because m in y equals mx plus b is our slope, and then we can move on from there. So let's do that. We have ax minus 3y equals 3. So let's put this in a nice thing. So that'll be negative 3y equals negative ax plus 3. So let's divide everything by negative 3. And we get y equals a over 3x minus 1. Let me know if that doesn't make sense. So this is our first equation. And our other equation is just y equals 2x plus 3b. Okay, y equals 2x plus 3b. Okay, what two things have to be true? You just said them in that thing you put in the, in the chat, robot. Those two things. Same slope, different y-intercept. So what are the two things that have to be true? Now, I don't know what the answers look like, but you said the two things. So we're going to do them algebraically with the information we have here. Think about that for a sec. I sent the answer choices because they matter. OK, I'm just going to write what I think would get us to the answer choices regardless. So let's say we, so we know that the slope has to be the same. So here's the slope. Here's the slope. Those have to be the same. 2 equals a over 3. Yes, perfect. And then the other one, the y-intercept, the y-intercepts have to be different. So that means we know that 3b does not equal negative 1. Now, I don't know how these two things are going to look in the answer choices, but those are the two things. And you said all of the stuff you needed for this problem. So let's see what the answer choices are. Bob. Ooh, fun. How very fun. Okay, so we've done all the other work and now we're just comparing. Right? That's what we're doing. So what do we got? We have A equals 2. No, that's not true. So I'm sorry, I'm looking at A here. A equals 2. That's not true because we see here, we can just solve this real quick. A equals 6. So we know that. So if A equals 6, our answer is either C or D. And then we say that B is not equal to negative 1 third. Uh, yes, let's, let's do that. Even if you have a not equal sign, you can still manipulate the equation. It's just, it always means not equal, just not equal. Yes. So this will be B does not equal negative one-third. That's the other thing. So that'll give us answer choice C. Um, uh, yeah. Wait, I don't see the difference between C and D. Is there a difference between C and D? There's a difference between C and D. Oh, yes. Sorry, yeah. D has an equal sign. C has a not equal sign. What would the answer choice D mean for this problem? If answer choice D were correct, what must the question have been? I think that's a cool follow-up question. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. But the answer for this one, when we're saying no solutions, is C. If the answer is D, what would that mean for these two equations? Infinite solutions. Yes. Very good. That is an indication to me that you know what's going on. 
because you can deal with stuff on the fly like that because you have a very deep understanding of this stuff. I am pleased. Are you pleased? I think Hono is just going to be robot dancer very soon. You think so? Yeah, Hono has amazing powers of osmosis. Yeah. And I feel like by not asking her own questions and just getting robots answers, just, yeah. I literally always thought that. You have? Yeah. I just didn't want to say it to you. Because uh, <laughs> I felt like... you. I missed you, Bert. Really? Yeah. Why? It's been like three days not seeing each other. Four. Four? I left early, early Friday morning. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. Yeah. So three days. How many fingers did you just put up? This is your Friday. No. Friday. Can we go to the next one? This is not an SAT related, but I heard GRE math is easier than SAT. Who told you that? Where did you hear that? I'm not much of an authority on that, but who told you that? We'll, we'll get down to the bottom of that. Oh yeah. Hey Hono, just while Bird is getting ready for the next question, um, I, I do want to say that for the ACT, I think of, yeah. It'll be the leftmost one, yeah. Um, for the for the AP Lang, um, the passages for the the passages are just way harder, but the same approach should apply. So it's it's definitely harder, but do the easier questions first, do the harder questions last, um, eliminate answer choices. That is the best way because especially on this one, it is hard. Don't look for the right answer. It's not going to be smacking you in the face like it sometimes does on the SAT. You have to be eliminating stuff. It's your best shot. Am I wrong? I saw it on Reddit. Um, to be honest, I haven't done the GRE math. My guess is that I, I've found that people sometimes have an easier time with the GRE because the people taking the GRE generally aren't forced to. Whereas most... A lot of people taking the SAT don't necessarily want to. I took the GRE a couple no, years ago. No, 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 no. I did. Oh. To be totally honest, I forgot exactly how it compares to the SAT. I assume the math is higher level. Slightly, at least. <sighs> I would hope so. I think that there's calculus on the GRE. Is there? I never took it. <laughs> so, I never took it. Right, right. So you, you should be convincing me. Yeah, right. I'm asking you. No, you said it more of as a statement. No, I think. There's calculus on the GRE, and then you put up at the end, which yeah. is what you do with statements. No! <laughs> sorry. No, bird. Oh, I'm sorry. What you heard was a question. You realize I'm a bird, right? There's a lot of things yes. that you expect me to be able to do. Oh, sorry. Because you're expecting a human, but I'm a bird. Right. So I can't do things like understand what's. So inflection you know, interpretation is not your forte. Gone. Yeah. Completely gone. It sounds like I can, you know, formulate statements and questions just like as good as the next guy. Um, you know what's interesting? What? I just thought about this because I was thinking, saying something starting with avian. Avian flu is like the past tense of like avian flies. Hmm. You know? Hmm. 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 Yes. Just saying. That's very good. Yeah. All right. The graph of the linear function f is shown above in the xy plane. Uh, which of the following is the graph of f of x plus 2 in the xy plane. Um, I don't really need it. I'll tell you what's going to happen. No. All right? I'll tell you what's going to happen. This is a transformation question. So we start out with y is equal to f of x. Um, ba -ba 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 -da -ba -ba -da. OK? So here's what we'll tr different transformations will do. The, the very easiest one is if you just add something to the very end. All right, we're going to call it plus side, uh, we'll plus, we'll say v. Okay, there's a reason why I chose v. If you just add a number to the end, that's going to be a vertical shift. If it's positive, everything will be shifted up. If it's negative, everything's going to be shifted down. Okay, but that's, as you notice, outside of the function. You're adding it on to the function. All right, so this is not that. This is a vertical transformation. It's a vertical translation. When you translate something, you mean you move it up or down or left or right. Okay. So this is not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with when you change the x value inside. We have x plus 2. All right, so one might think 
that we're adding 2 to the x value, so that means that the x value is going to get 2 bigger, which means the x value is going to move to the right. So you'd think, oh, okay, 2 to the right, I'll just choose the graph that is 2 units to the right of everything that I have here. That is wrong. All right, it is the opposite of what you would expect. This is going to be 2 to the left. If you want to move in the positive direction, you have to be subtracting 2. Okay? So with vertical shifts, it works exactly like you'd think it would be. So positive will go up, negative will go down. But in terms of inside the function parentheses, if it's positive, that will be left. If it is negative, that will be right. Um, so you're looking for whatever graph matches that graph, but is two, everything has been moved two units to the left. So it looks like the y-intercept right now is 2. So you'd be moving that point two units to the left, which means you'd now have a point at negative 2 comma positive 2. And I suppose you would now have a y-intercept of it looks like 3. It looks like everything's going to be scooted over two units. And so at y equals 3, that'll become the y-intercept. Yes. Um, outside of parentheses, up or down. Inside of parentheses equals left or right, robot dancer. I think you said left or down. So left or right. You got left and right. You got up and down. All right. Does that make sense? I mean, there's a reason why it's the opposite from what you'd think. Um, yes, what you meant. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Ooh, Levi's making a fun little drawing. You want me to pull up the next question? Drawing? Yes, please. Yeah, you made a drawing. Yes. You made a drawing. Yes, sir. Yes, you did. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, you did. You have to leave a nine, you said? Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is your next question, robot, and there's nothing you can do about it ah, because nice. it's in the past. So this guy, we have, we have three circles. Can you make it a little smaller? We have three, three concentric circles, and we're talking about the probability to the top. Yeah. I would have figured it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, have we have the probability that we end up in the gray, sorry, the gray region. So we basically just need to find the areas of these circles. They tell us that the biggest circle has some radius, and then the middling circle has a radius half of the biggest circle, and the smallest circle has a radius half of the middling circle. Can you read that? No, but I read it before. Oh. So we're throwing a dartboard randomly. What's the possibility or what's the probability that it lands in the shaded region? The answer is not one third. I assume. I actually haven't done it, but I assume it's not one third. Hope not. Um, there are a couple ways you can do this. You can just plug in numbers. I assume I would recommend plugging in numbers that are simple. So let's do that first. We have, it is. All it right, is. well, we'll see why it is. The answer is one third. Apparently. Oh, interesting. You just guess that? Oh, it's, it's sorry, it is not one third. No, oh. I was saying like it's one of the three circles, so it's definitely not that. Yeah, yeah there's no way. Um, so we have this big radius, so radius one. Let's say it's eight. Let's say radius two is now four, and then radius three is going to be two. My lord. Yes. Why not four, two, and one? Because I wanted this one. All right. It's con that's a good point. I just don't like with radius one because it's a, some people freak out. Right. Ones. Okay. So this is the guy we care about mainly. We actually, oh, we do care about that. But we'll get there. So we have the radius of this guy is going to be, sorry, the area. The area will be 16 pi. Radius one equals a. Um. Yes, you could do that. Right, right now, I'm just plugging in values. Would you let, do you understand how to do it if you plug in values and you want to see how to do it algebraically? Because I can just skip to that. I was going to do that next. But that, honestly, you, know, you could do it either way. This way is totally foolproof. I mean, you could, it's not totally foolproof, but this is just as good of a way to do it as the other one. Because then you're just doing normal division. You're using numbers. It's a little bit more straightforward. Let me know what you want. And say specifically, don't just say, you can continue with what you're doing. Thank you. OK, radius here, or sorry, the area here will be 64 pi. And the area for the last one is 4 pi. So the shaded will be 16 pi minus 4 pi. 
right? Because it's you have that gray circle B, but then we have the circle cut out of the middle of it, so it's going to be 12 pi. So this is the shaded portion, and then the overall area is going to just be the area of the big circle, so it's 64 pi. So the probability of shaded is going to equal 12 pi over 64 pi. Those cancel 12, 64, I guess you can take out a 4, so that equals 3 over 16. So that is the probability. Does this approach make sense? And now I'll take it with the other approach. We'll come from this direction. Makes sense, very good. The other way, there, there are a couple ways we can do this. So R1, R2, and R3. And we're going to do it, you, would you like me to make it A? And which one would you like me to make A? There, there's an easy way to do this and a hard way to do this. They're both gonna end up in the same place. Are you saying you want the radius to be A, you want it to be R? R1, okay. So just so you know, if we make this happen, then R2 will be A over two, and R3 will be A over four. Right, divide by two, divide by two again. A slightly easier way would be to make R three A, and then we have A two A four A. It's just whole numbers instead of fractions, which is nicer. Doesn't really matter. So the area of this one will be A squared pi. This one will be A squared over four pi. And this one will be a squared over 16 pi. Same exact thing as over here. We're going to do a squared pi over 4 minus a squared pi over 16. That will give us the shaded area, total shaded area. That'll be, let's, um, let's multiply this guy by 4 over 4 to give us a common denominator. So we're going to get this will be equal to, that'll be 16 on the bottom. So we're going to have a 16 on the bottom. And then we'll have 4a squared minus a squared pi. So we have 3a squared pi. Happy? And then we have to do this thing here. Let me just make sure I did this right. Yeah, that looks good. Um, we have to take this guy and divide it by this one. So I'll do that in pink now. Not that that necessarily helps. Well, let's take this. Take this. I'm going to bring them both down. And this is the probability of shaded equals 3a squared pi over 16 over a squared pi. a squared pi. The pi's cancel. The a squared's cancel. You just get 3 over 16. It's the same thing. It would have been a little bit simpler, so you don't have to deal with fractions if you go a, a, 2a and 4a. You don't have to. I also like using r when talking about the, uh, a variable that represents radii, but totally up to you. doesn't make a difference. Both ways work. This is a more algebraically pure way, but this works perfectly. So if, if you see this, then do this. Um, maybe pick easier numbers, do 4, 2, and 1, um, or a, 2a, 4a. Can I make a equal x, b equal 2x, and c equal 4x? Um, yes, as long as your a is not this stuff, yeah. If by a you mean, um, if by a, b, and c, oh, you mean the radii of the circle, of each of the circles? Yes, you can do that as well. Same deal. X's, A's, R's, doesn't matter as long as you have a variable and the relationship between the variables that, or the relationship between how we are representing each of the radii is, is consistent, then you're good. I like this problem. This is cool. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody else have questions? We, ha we have a couple more viewers now, which is pretty cool. Um, Braid, you're going to take the next one, I think? Yes. Okay. Um, do you want to erase while I bring it up, or you want to bring it up? Yes. Okay, Brady. Um, 
I don't know. Okay, I understand. The plugging in seems less complicated. Yes, the plugging in requires less overall understanding of the the big picture situation. Um, and honestly, I like that way better in this case because we're not trying to come up with some clear change or, or like generalizable concept. We're just saying, okay, what's what's the probability? So make up your own numbers. There's also Fine. a song that goes along with it. Plug it in, plug it in, when no one is around you. Say, baby, I love you. If you ain't plug, plug, plug it, it in. Plug it in. my name, bird. We gotta figure out the rest of those lyrics. I don't think so. That first part, we come in solid, and then it just kind of yeah. always. Yeah, and we're right out. with those lyrics. That was oh, actually yeah, the no, original. No, no. Those first lyrics are right. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Beyonce wanted it to be plug it in, plug it in, but then the rest yeah. of the. The ladies in Destiny's Child were like, nope, it, that, it's got to be Say My Name. Beyonce was like, Ugh, fine, but I'm going to remember this, yeah. and eventually I'm going to go off and make my own career. And that's exactly what happened, all because of Plug It In, Plug It In. Mm -hmm. I heard about that. Yeah, actually, Beyonce was doing SAT, ACT prep. Beyonce loves the SAT and ACT Like, she was, she was helping people prepare. She was a, you know, how do you say that? I guess a tutor? Tutor. Toot. Toad. Okay. Plug it in, plug it in. You're acting kind of shade word and calling me brave word. I don't like how big this problem is. I'm going to ignore this. Why? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. Make it big. Oh, that's really big. How do you feel? Please about explain it? the vertex thing and why intercept form oh my god makes no sense. We will. <laughs> we will. All right. The equation above represents a parabola on the xy plane, which of the following equivalent equations displays the y-intercept of the parabola as a constant and a coefficient. Great. All right, let's talk about that, huh? All right, so first thing is we're going to have to figure out what the y-intercept is. When they say which of these displays it as a constant or coefficient, they mean like which one uses that number in the equation. So if the, if the y-intercept is 7, we ended up figuring out it's 7, we're going to need to see 7 in one of the equations they have there. Okay, so, 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 the y-intercept is when you cross the y-axis. You cross the y-axis when your x is zero, all right? You wanna find, this is just in general, you wanna find the y-intercept? Is that what you want, huh? You want that? x is zero. Put in x equals zero, solve for y. You wanna find the x-intercept, huh? That's what you want. Plug in y equals zero, solve for x, all right? That's, you gotta, you gotta lock that in. All right, lock it in, plug it in, whatever you want to do with that, okay? We're looking for the y-intercept of this parabola, so we're going to have to plug in 0 for x. So we're going to end up with y is equal to 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 4. So this is going to be negative 2 times negative 4, which is positive 8. The y-intercept is positive 8. We need to see an 8 in the answers. Levi. Yes. You're fine there. I'm going to just change this thing. Very good. Okay. Oh, you want to see the answers? I, I have to. Uh, all right, all right, great. I'm going to be down here. So we need an answer that has 8 in it. And it looks, I'm going to just hang out over here. There, that, that's where I am. I'm going to make this smaller. Just make it a little smaller, all right? A has 8 in it, all right? So that is a definite possibility. B does not, C has an 8 in it, D does not, all right? So at least the ones with eights in it, we it has to be either A or C. So let me write those down, then we'll take a look at them. Let me use a different, different color. C also has eight, but I don't understand constants. Yeah, hold on. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I know you're right. It's going to be A or C. Uh, y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 8. And the other one is going to be y minus 8 <coughs> is equal to x times x minus 6. OK. Fantastic. Fantastic. No, I just need to get rid of this thing. All right. The difference between a constant or a coefficient is this. Coefficient is the number before a variable. All right, all these numbers I'm writing are coefficients of different terms. <coughs> a constant is just a number by itself, no x value. Five would be a constant here, it can't change. 
So that is a constant, and these two are coefficients. More generally, if they're saying it's going to show up as a constant or a coefficient, it means... Happy it's... birthday to you. What? Happy birthday. This is a cupcake. It's very hard to see. Happy birthday. I don't know where I was in the song. To plug it me. When <coughs> no one is around you. you plug it Play it good and... Happy birthday to me. Yay! It was my birthday on yes. Saturday. Yes, so today's an important day. Yes, it is. It's the first post-birthday stream. That's true. Yes, and you're a big 18-year-old now. I'm 18 now. Yeah. Gee, I hope I get into college. <laughs> so I got this for you. Hold this for a moment. I didn't have enough hands. But I know that you, you're eating, you're trying to eat healthily. So you can have this while I eat the cupcake. I figured I'd give you a whole can because I'm a very giving tutor partner. Where's the mayonnaise? Oh, there's no mayonnaise. Eat, eat that bird. Happy birthday. Fat Don't sugar. look a gift horse in the tuna mouth or something. Yeah, see this is nice, us two hanging out. You're sick. You gave me a cupcake and you took it away and you gave me tuna. You're eating healthy, remember? I know, but I'm, I'm supposed to not even eat after 8 p.m. Oh. This is great, but we gotta put it in the fridge. I'll eat this later. Okay. Well, what about this? I really don't like icing. Well, let's just put it on the tuna. Should we mix them? <laughs> that came off very easily. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, well, hold on. Wait, let's not, ha let's get rid of this. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to put that. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants that. All right, let's get some tuna on it. Yeah, you want the tuna. Mm. All right, so I'm going to give you this back. Right. You're doing great, by the way. Yeah. This is yeah. this is the Lord's work yeah. right here. This will be on the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, All right. Yeah, great, great. Great birthday song. Put that in the fridge. Yep. And I'll eat that later. I actually really want it. Go for it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. You right. got it, man. So you don't want any of this. Well, you know what I say? Uh, tuna is, a can of tuna is pretty much identical to every other can of tuna, at least in my mind. Different fish, actual fish, same species, it's a cylinder of compressed tuna, so like I'll get another can of tuna, and it will remind me of that one. Okay. They're pretty much interchangeable. Yeah. All right. You keep going. All right. You're doing great, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Great. So the other part of this is which one is actually equivalent to the problem that we started with? The problem we started with was y is equal to x minus 2 times x minus 4. If it's not equivalent to that, then we can't use it, okay? So let's just see. How are we going to get one of these equations? Well, one thing we could do is we could FOIL this. If we FOIL this, we're going to get, let's see, x squared minus 6x plus 8, which this is identical to that. So right now, this looks like a great contender because it is identical to that one if you FOIL this out. So it is going to be equivalent. Let's talk about this one, though. Let's turn this into y equals and see what it looks like. So this would be x squared minus 6x plus 8. Very interesting. Very interesting. So it would, in fact, they would both, it would both be equivalent. Minus 6x plus 8. Hold on a second. What am I missing? All right. As a constant or coefficient. What's the issue? Well, okay, x squared minus 6x plus 8. Okay, I think I understand. I think I understand. The issue, Levi, yeah. is that our, our y-intercept is positive 8. That's the issue. Yeah, yeah. That's the issue. Oh, yeah. Our y-intercept is positive 8, so we need to see positive 8 in our equation. This is the original equation where we see negative 8. All right, it means it's a positive 8 over here, but they don't show it as positive 8. They show it as negative 8. This one here is already seen as positive 8, so that's the one you're going to want to go with. Now, you have questions here about vertexes, or rather vertices. There is no, there's no vertex part of this question. We can talk about vertex form if you want, and we can go over how that works, but knowing vertex form was not required for this question, as long as you understand how to find the y-intercept, what it means for it to show up as a constant error coefficient. Uh, robot, does that make it a sense? While you're waiting, do you actually not want this cupcake? 
Um, actually, I would like it. Okay. Can I not eat it now, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I'm right. going to eat the tuna, then. You, you do have to choose one. Right. Yeah, which one do you want? I want the cupcake. Okay. Yes. Do you want the icing? Um, no. Okay. No, I don't. I don't want the icing. I'm going to take a stand. All right, well, uh, in the absence of a response from Robot, I guess we can go on to the next one. The next one. What's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Please review vertex form and the other two forms I can't understand and memorize it. Got it. All right. We have our marching orders. Levi, what time is it? It is 9.30. I have a watch. I don't know why I asked you that. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, it's in one of the questions I sent. Oh, okay, so we do have to go to the one of the questions that you sent. I see what's going on here. All right, all right, so we can teach it in context of that question that you sent. Let's see what you got here. All right, all right, all right. Is it... It's the last one in that group. Hmm. You're right. You're right. It's this one, isn't it? Okay. Oh, wait. All right. Here we go. Love cropping it. Love cropping it. Oh, man. This is just going to be a banner on top of the screen. Like Bruce. Bruce Banner. The Incredible Hulk. Oh! It's the other one. All right. All right, fine. Ugh, fine. Yuck. Oh, the last one. This one. This one? Maximum value, vertex. All right, yeah, you're right. Oh, this really worked out well. It's the, oh, I have to get the equation on it, too. Okay. There it is. How's that tuna, huh? Did Sorry. I get that tuna? Yeah, it's good. Yeah? Yes. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. I feel like you're yelling at me. <laughs> why? No, I don't know why. why no, I, I feel like I would have zero reason to yell at you ever, Levi. You're nothing but a pleasant companion. <laughs> <laughs> Who never says anything that just gets under my gills. Yeah. Gills. I understood that reference. A shoe manufacturer determines that its monthly revenue, rukwa in dollars, is given by the function def definite above, where Q is the number of pairs of shoes sold each month. We what don't is condone. We don't. It's, we don't condone violence. Uh, what is the maximum value of the shoes? Okay, so first things first. This equation is in vertex form, as you already said. You already said that. So let's talk about vertex form. All right. A couple different forms of quadratics. You got your standard form. Looks like that. You got your vertex form. Levi, is there another form? Could you have it in like... Standard and vertex? Um, X-intercept form? Factored form. Factored form? Yeah. All I right. Say that. Can you put an A in front of it? Uh... Yeah. It should be A. Hold on. Right, because you can have the same two y-intercepts. Sure. sure. Sorry, x-intercepts, but then change the upward I, or downward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I would make it very clear that none of those variables, none of those coefficient variables, are the same. These are the same. Those end up giving you the same thing. Yeah, but the A in front of the last one does not. Do you know why? Do you know why? Oh, it does, actually. Well, you, the yes, it would. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. But the B and C. Are not the same as these ones? Yeah. I see what you're saying. I see what he's saying. D, E. Okay. Standard, vertex, factored form, which helps you find the x-intercepts. Here's what all of this means. All of these have A in them. 
A controls whether your parabola is going upward or downward, and it controls the width. Is it narrow? Is it wide? Is it narrow? Is it wide? Okay, that's not what you're concerned about here. You can take any equation and turn them into the other one. So it's not like there's a parabola that can only be defined by one of these. You can put them in all these different forms. You know, the parabola is going to look identical. It'll just be expressed slightly differently. So with vertex form, the, the convenient part of vertex form is that they put in the coordinates of the vertex, hk, in the equation. Okay? This actually goes back to the translations we were talking about earlier. We're subtracting the h value, which means positive h. We're adding the k value, which is positive k. So k is exactly what you think it's going to be, and then it's going to be subtracting the x-coordinate of our vertex. So up here, up here, up here, the vertex is going to be, it looks like we're subtracting 260. That's going to be our x value. And our k value is 9,500. Let's remember what means what, though. Okay, the q is like our x. And q is the number of pairs of shoes. So that means this is going to be the number of pairs. And the r function is 9,500. Sorry, this is q. And this is going to be r, which represents the revenue. And the question is, what's the max value of the company's revenue in dollars? And this is, is it monthly? Yes, it is. Okay, so this is revenue. Well, this right here is a negative parabola. It's a, neg it's a downward facing parabola because our A value, negative 0.31, is negative. So this thing is going down, which means it has a maximum. It's a vertex that is the highest value you're going to have, which is like my head. If these are the branches of the parabola, my head right now is the vert. Really, it's more my neck because my head is sticking out above the parabola. You'd have to cut my head off, and you'd have a really nice parabola. And then it would be the stump where my head was that would count as the maximum. I think that makes sense. So this right here represents the y value max of your vertex. So this right here is what they're looking for. That's the maximum value of the company's monthly revenue. OK? Robot. Robot, robot. What are your thoughts on this? In this case, D and E are the x-intercepts. Does this make you feel like you're well-oiled as a robot, able to weld rivets into cars and things like that? I hope so. But yeah, that's, that's, that's vertex form. All right, H and K. At some point, you just got to memorize it. You got to be able to just pull it out of your memory. I understand this problem. Please explain the other form. This one, this bottom one, or this top one? Standard form or factored form? Which one do you want? Don't say yes. If you say yes, I will take my towel and I will hit Levi on the shoulder and tell him that I don't get no balance. Oh, the other form, standard. All right. Hey, well, that's standard. That's a good question. Okay. Huh. Okay. Standard form of a parabola. It's one of my favorite forms of one of my favorite shapes. I hated factored form in high school. Lazarus. Lazarus 96. Big fan of your work, way better than Lazarus 95 and 94, but Lazarus 93 was probably the best that Lazarus has gotten so far. That's just what I think, but I may be wrong. Gotta let this stuff dry. Come on, come on, get rid of this. All right. After this, I'm done, Levi. Okay. All right. So you take a look at standard form, and there are three things that can change. A, B, and C. All right. Each one of those controls something different. First one, which is the easiest, is your C value. Your C value is your Y intercept. All right. Like I said before, oh, this marker's thick. Like I said before, your Y intercept is where you cross the Y axis, which is where your X is zero. If you put an X equals zero in for these X's, both of these are gonna just cancel out. You know, this would be A times zero, B times zero. They're not gonna mean anything, leaving you with Y equals C. All right, so this tells us right here what our Y intercept is going to be. So there's that, all right? 
Then there is A. And to make A make sense, I'm just going to draw the simplest parabola there is. They've looked around the world. They can't find a simpler one. Y equals X squared. All right, looks like this. It's symmetrical because when you square a number, positive or negative, it becomes positive. So positive 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 squared is also 9. So they're going to be symmetrical about the y-axis. Okay? So there's that. Now, if we throw in a number like 2x squared, what that's going to mean is whatever we used to get, we're now going to multiply that by 2. So our y value is going to be 2 times bigger than it was before. All right? So whereas we used to go up this high, now we're going to go up that high. We used to go up this high. Now we're going to go up that high. All right? It's not a vertical translation. It is a vertical stretch. This thing is going to get bigger in the vertical direction, and it's going to rise more rapidly, which means it's going to be narrower. Okay? The larger your A value gets, the narrower your parabola opens. All right? This is Y equals X squared, 2X squared, 3X squared, 4X squared. It's going to get really tight. It's never going to become perfectly vertical because that's just not what they do, but it's going to become really, really steep. All right, that's what A does. And if you made a negative, okay, Y is equal to negative X squared, it is going to be going downward from the origin. All right, your A value is pretty much the one of the most, I mean, yes, they're all important, but your A value has the strongest power in changing what your parabola is doing. It tells you if it's going upward, if it's positive, if it's going downward, A is going to be negative. And the size of A also tells you how wide or narrow your parabola is going to be opening. All right? Your B value is not really, it's important, but it's not really tied to like a firm thing on the graph. Um, so what you're going to have to do here, I remember there was one question that asked for something which shows the constant and it was in vertex form Y. Uh, was it a question? that you sent us, or uh, you know, what, uh, what question was that? Let us know, let us know. Um, so yes, this gives the y-intercept um, things that you can do. If you factor it, you'll find the x-intercepts. All right, as soon as you have a y-intercept, you got your x-intercepts. If, you if you want to find the vertex of this, no, I answered it, but I can't find it. If you want to find the vertex in standard form, you can find the x-coordinate of your vertex and you're going to use this following formula, minus b over 2a. That will give you the x-coordinate of your vertex. Once you have that, you can just plug it back into the equation. You'll get the y-coordinate of your vertex. Uh, but minus b over 2a, remember that, x-coordinate of your vertex. Levi, you got to take over. I got to go. Oh, yeah. I got to go. Hello. Uh, uh, I got to go. I'm just getting one more bite of tuna. Oh, man. Levi loves his tuna. Mm -hmm. Tuna melt. By the way, you should tell them about that thing in the corner. Oh yeah, bird. Alta Ipsum, just so you know, so everybody knows. Um, Alta Ipsum is our sponsor. They, oh shoot, it's gone. Well, it's still the same thing. Um, they, oh, what do they do? Um, should I bring the muffin up, cupcake up? <laughs> what, sorry? Cupcake, bring it up. Yeah, that's for you, dude. Thanks, dude. Okay, so Alta Ipsum is a grade tracking executive functioning app. You can schedule all your stuff in there. Yeah, no problem for the lecture. We're, we're not done. Birds, oh, sorry, you just said, hey, Bird. Yeah. Neuronet said, thank you. Oh. Now it's me. So I do the same things as Brady, except after him, basically. Um, Alta Ipsum, uh, you can get it for a month for free, and you can put all your classes in. It'll track your grades. It'll track your, um, you know, and then you can track for yourself you know, how things are going from there. You can put in when you have a test or when you have a quiz or a paper due and it'll set up a study schedule for you um, after formula and then you can manipulate that study, study schedule as you please. So that's what this is. Um, I wasn't paying any attention because I was actually prepping for my child who's right at 9.30, so I'll have to actually end stream at 9.28, 9.29, if I remember. Also, all of you missed um, Brady's birthday gift. I gave him a cupcake. That's what he was talking about before he left. Um, does anybody else have questions? Robot, did we finish your questions? Did Brady finish? Do we have more? Do you need more? I can check my phone real quick. 
um, for Discord. But I'm happy to answer more questions. I'm happy to talk about apostrophes. I said I would. Does anybody care to learn about apostrophes or no? I saw it. Why was there tuna? Okay, so Brady is trying to eat more healthily. So I got him a cupcake for his birthday. And then I realized that he needs to eat. He might not want it. So I didn't want to force him to have a cupcake. So I gave him the option of tuna or cupcake. Nernet, how would you calculate the Euclidean distance um, in higher dimensions? Dude, I don't know. It's, it's not going to be on the SAT or ACT. There's one more of my questions. Very good. Yeah, I don't know. That's the question that Brady might be able to actually speak about intelligently, but I can't and won't. Um, but feel free to ask more. Uh, let's see. Okay. We got one more question. What's, is it this one? Is this the one we didn't do? Let's set this guy up. Calculator is not permitted on this one, by the way. Nothing there. Okay, so we'll do this until you tell me this is not the one you want me to do. Which is totally possible. Okay. Yes, very good. Okay, so the function, we have functions f of x is this thing, and g of x is that other thing, and graphed in the same xy plane. Which of the following formations, oh, transformations, could be to the graph of could be to the graph of f of x to obtain... Oh, okay, so how do we transform... This is worded incorrectly, but how do we transform f of x to get to g of x? Okay, so we're going from f of x, which is x minus 2 squared plus 4, and then we're going to g of x, which is x minus 2 squared minus 4. So the change is we subtract 8. So how do we, what happens graphically? We could graph both of these. Do you know how, uh, Brady was just talking about vertex form. Do, so do you know how to graph each of, each of these? We could ignore this part, really. It's just worrying about that part. So x minus 2, so we have 2 and 4. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's our vertex we're going to be opening up. So that's f of x. I only have two weeks until my SAT. Uh, my reading suck, sucks. Should I just grind grammar and math once I can't improve my reading in two weeks? Um, yeah, conceptually, yes. I mean, you're not going to raise your reading comprehension in two weeks, but do you feel comfortable with all of the question types? Um, or is there a specific question type that you want to go through with me right now? Because we can pull up an SAT and work on just those questions. And if, it, if it's the, you know, the main idea questions and things like that, those are hard. Those are, you know, but there are, there are ways to improve the reading section even with only two weeks left. Um, that, that more has to do with a test over having to do with um, comprehension generally when you read things. This guy, the, the intercept is down 4 for the y value, so it's here. So this is g of x. We're clearly going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's a transformation of down 8. I'm not sure exactly how the answers are worded on this question, but that's what's going on. So you don't have to worry about this. The only change is you had plus 4, and now you have minus 4. So you've subtracted 8 from the first one to get to the second one. Or you could graph them both and look at it visually. Although that might get hard if these get hard. But that's the same idea as saying you have f of x equals x squared plus 4. Then you're going to g of x equals x squared minus 4. Same deal. Or just x squared down to x squared minus 8. Those are all the same thing. Everything, you drop 8 to do the transformation. OK. For those of you who are watching and not asking questions, that's fine. But then you're just watching me tutor Robot Dancer, which is cool. Um, for those of you not on Twitch, Robot Dancer is on Twitch. So you may not be able to see Robot's um, questions, which are the things to which I'm responding. Um, 
but you can see the question that was asked that I was doing clear. Okay, I'm going to erase this. I'm out of robots questions unless somebody has posted more, which is possible and hopeful, or I am hopeful. Okay, um, I can talk about apostrophes. I, I forget, I think I already asked this, but does anybody want me to go over apostrophes? Does everybody feel totally prepared to do apostrophes on the test? Whatever test you're prepping. Robot, would you like to go through some reading section questions? I know we've done a ton of two-part questions, so that's probably not going to be too much of a help at this point, but maybe, and we've done vocab and context, we could do some main idea questions to, to work on those, how to eliminate stuff there. Um, yeah, it's, it's never too late I would, to, to study. I mean, two weeks, you don't feel great about it, that's fine. Um, we could do that. Let me check the Discord. No Discord questions, which is ideal. That's ideal. If you don't know what the Discord is, please let me know. Oh, oh, what's this? No, that was nothing, was it? No, that was nothing. Okay. So I will, um, nobody's asking questions. For those of you who are under the impression that this is not live, you're wrong. I can prove it to you if you put some, if you say something in the comments of whatever platform you're on, and I will respond to you, and likely butcher your username, whatever it may be. Okay, let's do apostrophe stuff. Nobody talking, so we're doing apostrophes. I will stop as soon as someone asks for something else. So there are two camps for apostrophes um, that, that they test on either the SAT or ACT. It doesn't matter. We have contractions. CB Turtle. Wow, CB Turtle, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Thank you for the resub. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's great. OK, popping in, popping out, and maybe you'll come back, you're coming back at some point relatively soon to keep studying. But good to see you again. So, contractions. I don't know why our sub animation isn't working. I don't know, maybe you all saw it. I didn't see it. Contractions or ownership. So, the first step is to decide, okay, do I which one do I want? Right? So, if you have mm, Let's say, no, that's bad. The board's tax or the boards heavy. So those are your two sentences. They use apostrophe s in different ways. Okay? This one is ownership. Right, owner. This one is contraction. Now contraction means it's two words smushed together and the apostrophe takes the place of missing stuff. So this is board is, right? The board is heavy. So that's not necessarily hard. I mean, everybody understands that you could say um, Brady is tall. That means Brady is tall, and you have apostrophe S after Brady. That's fine. This ownership, get, this ownership stuff gets a little bit messy, 
when you talk about where exactly you need to put the apostrophe. So let's talk about that. There, so always, not quite always, but always put apostrophe s. You always do that, except exception. There is one exception. Your noun is plural. Noun ends in s already. So in this case, we would have um, so we have this normal stuff here, and then we have exceptions here. So normal stuff would be Bob's shoes or something like that. Or we could have um, children's games, something like that. Um, let's do another one, the cat's meow or the bee's knees. These are all just normal apostrophe s. Just throw apostrophe s after because none of them fit these two exception rules. And the exception, what you do is you put s apostrophe. Okay? So this is two dogs paws. So I put the two in there to show that there are two dogs. Because if we say the dogs paws and do D O G apostrophe S, that's one dog. Dogs paws. But if we have two dogs, then we have a noun that's plural because we have dogs, and it already ends in S. So you don't want to say dogs is. If we have, um, let's say, the houses doors. So there are multiple houses and they have doors, you just do apostrophe, you, you just throw in the apostrophe. So you just, this is part of the word. So yada, 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 S, and you just throw in the apostrophe. Here you're doing the apostrophe S. You don't give it your own S. You wouldn't say the houses is. You just say the houses doors. The houses, that's all just part of the original word because you're making it plural. You just do apostrophe at the end. Let me know if that doesn't make sense to anybody. Contractions are just contractions. So now these don't have to have S's, but that's the most common. We could have um, she's tall or um, it's big, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just going with large things now. Those types of things. But we could also have couldn't, for example. That's an, you know, you're not confused. That's not ownership. Nobody thinks that couldn't is could not. Doesn't really matter there. Now, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. I'm going to do this in pink. We have it's over here. The ownership it's is I T S. It's pause. So let's say the, there's a dog and we're talking about it's pause. That would be I T with no apostrophe. Here, if we have whose, that means who is. So apostrophe S for whose is who is. Whose pause? Its pause, okay? That is ownership, okay? So we have its and whose. Those are commonly mistaken words. You will I would say with 95% likelihood, chance of likelihood probability, you were going to get its versus its on the test and 95% chance again, whose versus whose. You will have to deal with those commonly mistaken words. It's a little bit less likely that you have to deal with there, there, and there. Um, and there are other ones as well, effect and effect. Um, what are the other ones? Number versus amount, fewer versus less, things like that. Those are slightly more idiomatic, but these are just the, the meaning of the words. So keep those in mind 
When you're doing ownership with whose and its, you do not have apostrophes. Contractions have the apostrophes. Okay? Seems like nobody has any questions. That is just fine with me. Um, I'm going to erase this. Did Brady, what was Brady gonna do today? Does anybody remember? I should remember Brady was going to do, mm, I can look in a second. There doesn't seem to be any more questions, that's fine. If it seems like I ask you to ask questions a lot, it's because I actually want them. Ooh, hey folding table, what's up? Do you have any questions or are you just stopping, stopping in to say hi? For those of you not on Twitch, this is somebody on Twitch saying hello. Stopping in. Cool. Hello. I've been here the whole time waiting for you. Right. Educate myself before going to bed. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel more educated? You look more educated, and you smell that way, too. That's good enough, I think. Yes, man. Very good. Please ask me your questions. If you happen to be one of my private students, and you are watching right now, then I recommend you ask some questions. Um, I know I said I wouldn't answer your homework questions, and that's fine, but if you have any conceptual questions, I'm happy to go over those. I have about, four, I would say 14 minutes until I'm going to hop off and prep for other stuff on my own. Or if there are absolutely no questions, then I probably will just sign off nowish. But it, it, you know, so ask your stuff, please and thank you. What's that? I think I spit on the screen. Probably can't see that. Ooh. Okay. Uh, no questions. Uh, let me see what Brady. What we said. I don't even know the title of the stream. Give me a sec. Oh, surface area and volume. Oh, yes. Hey, Kevin. Um, yes, practice test for SAT or ACT. Um, I think, I mean, there, there are the official practice ones that both of the, yes, I totally agree. Surface area and volume are, are relatively straightforward. ACT, if you Google Reddit, ACT tests. I'm sure there is a folder with all of them. Um, or you could just Google practice at ACTs. I know Crack ACT has stuff. Uh, maybe Quantum ACT. These are all .com. Um, but yeah, Googling free ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are, these are, is, I, oh yeah, that makes sense that Crack ACT um, charges. But you could do that. Um, there, yeah, it, I would say Google Reddit free ACTs or Reddit all ACTs. Um, and I think, I'm sure people have compiled lists of them. Um, I would recommend not doing the most recent ones as just practice, but use the most recent ones as measuring sticks of this is where I am now with scoring um, and use the other ones just as working on concepts. Um, Kevin or anybody else, now that you're asking me questions, um, do you have any specific concepts, math or English or reading or, or uh, science or anything that, that, you, that you'd like to go over that you know, you know, this question type gives me trouble for whatever reason? Then we can, I can pull up an ACT and we can talk about some questions if you'd like.
Yeah, they should be free. I try not to give out. Uh, can we go over the different types of reading passages? Sure. Yes, on the ACT. Yes. Just give me a sec to pull up an ACT. Uh, ACT. Let's do that. Is that going to work? Oh, yeah, look at that. What's with the Q? Uh, Q means line. So, like, the Q of questions also means Q of questions. There's an extra UE if that's what's upsetting you. Extra UE was throwing me off. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's not some new word that you didn't know. Okay, so. So, reading passages, yes? Sorry, I'm just getting, making you sick or anything. Alright, here we go. So, reading test stuff. Alright. This is the literary narrative. Um, this it depends on what you're into. If you hate reading, then maybe... Oh, that's not even close to being on the screen, is it? Um, maybe you hate reading, so the literary narrative is probably not your cup of tea, which is fine. Um, in that case, I would recommend not doing this passage first. What's nice about these tests is you don't have to do things in order. Sometimes it makes sense to do things in order, like the math you should probably just do in order unless you have a really hard question and skip it. Um, but in the reading section, it just doesn't matter. All of the passages have 10 questions for the ACT and roughly 10 questions for the SAT. So if you're not into uh, literary passages that are fiction, then skip it because the, this is going to be really tough for you. It's going to take a long time. So the literary narrative, generally, there's, an, there's a story arc. It, it's sometime, you know, it'll jump around. It's not necessarily the most organized piece of writing, which can really give some people trouble because they're used to logically organizing what they read, and this doesn't really lend itself to that. So maybe some people have trouble uh, locating where answers would be. So just keep that in mind. I'm not sure what you're into reading-wise. Um, and if you'd like to talk about... Uh, approaches to how to read more quickly or, or get to the questions faster or other approaches to that, then let me know and I'll, I can talk about those things. Next passage, social science. Social science is social studies, basically. So not, necessary, not necessarily super historical stuff all the time, but it's often historical stuff. This is talking about the horse and buggy. Um, they're generally informational articles. These are pretty well... Um, well-written and uh, generally pretty contemporary in that they, you know, it, it's not really old English. Sometimes the literary narrative can be very challenging because it's very old English. It's not how you're used to reading stuff. Um, these often have split passages for passage two where you have the A and the B. So just be aware of that. I don't think that one is this one though. Oh, it is, yes. So we have passage B starting down here. So with these, the, uh, I'm so glad I'm done with this type of English testing. Sid, what's up? I don't know why it took me so long to see your comment. What's, what's going on? How are you? You look great. <clears throat> okay, so that's this stuff here, okay? I would recommend reading passage A, doing the questions, then reading passage B, doing those questions, and then doing the, two, the questions that deal with both of them. So we see, oh yeah, they tell you, 11, 12, 13. So to... You know, let's say that you hate these split passages, so you leave them for last. Then I would say read a bit, do a couple questions, read a bit, do the other questions, and then then do all the the, com the combination questions. Um, try to do the vocab and context questions first. It helps you build up your understanding. Then next we have humanities passage. Oh, what's going on here? Okay, I took AP Lit exam. Oh yeah. Okay, interesting. Easy essay. Minute of three. I took calc exam today. 
Do I hate stats? Don't need it for my major, so I'm not sweating it. It's coming for me. Oh, yeah. All right. Good. Yeah, Sid, you're almost done with high school. Crazy. I remember when you were not almost done with high school. That's about all I remember. Okay, this one. So this is humanities. This, this can also be very old English. This can be hard. Oh, and also with the, the challenging level of these, it generally changes. So they're, they're all generally going to be pretty challenging passages, but often people find one of these types to be the most challenging every time. And they also try to change up which is the most challenging. So there's a range of, of um, the, the level of analysis that you'll have to do just to understand what's going on. Okay, um, these are generally, th these more often than the literary, literary narrative are very logical, so that's good, but sometimes they can jump around in time, so that can, that can throw a monkey wrench in there with, with regards to identifying where your answer choices, or where to find your answers in the text, so be aware of that. Um, and then the last passage, here we go, natural science. This is the science stuff. These are generally the most logically organized, um, but they, they can sometimes really bog people down because they have a lot of scientific jargon for whatever they're talking about. Be careful of that. Don't get bogged down by these new terms and you have to understand everything. You know, if you're reading a passage for the first time and it's, it's using words, or a, then why do you guys enjoy tutoring? I'll answer that in a second. Um, if they start using words that you don't understand, don't feel the need like you probably do in, in normal high school classes where you have to understand the whole thing. Just know, oh, they're talking about this thing I don't fully get in this part. Or they're talking about, you know, ribosomes and deoxyribonucleic acid and mitochondria, whatever, whatever gets too much for you, that's fine. Skip that part while making a mental note of that. They're talking about this stuff. Um, and then with that, you're not, you're not trying to take in too much information at once because especially on the ACT, but SAT as well, and especially on the science passages for each one in the reading, there, there's a lot of new information and you don't have the time to absorb all of it. So don't, just when you're reading, come up with that structure of I know where everything is and this part I don't really get, but I'll read it again later and I'll be doing it in the service of a specific question, and because what you should be doing is proving things wrong, you won't actually necessarily have to understand everything to a T. Questions on that? Um, Sid, are you asking me why us guys understand tutoring, or enjoy tutoring, or you want to know, want to know why all the viewers? Yeah, okay, I figured. Um, but, I'm glad it helps you understand stuff, folding table, unless you're talking about you tutoring other stuff. I'm not sure, but why do I enjoy it? I like teaching. It's not, I mean, tutoring is teaching. It's just a little bit easier because you don't have a big classroom to manage. Um, oh, good. Yay. Um, I, I just like teaching. I like, it, you know, teaching definitely helps you learn stuff better. Like I really understand the SAT. I really get it. And I really get the ACT and I really get all the math classes I can teach. Um, and I, I really get, you know, AP Lit, actually. Um, and I really get the college app essay as much as there is to get about that. Um, it's, uh, it's really fun. I like understanding things at that deeper level. And I really like trying to make people understand stuff. Because you understanding something yourself is fine. But just saying your understanding of it at somebody else's face doesn't necessarily do anything. So I actually find it very challenging and engaging to try to figure out the best, like try to figure out how somebody gathers new information and give their mind, Brady says this, maximum stickiness so that when I throw a new thing at them, it'll stick to something that's already there. And they're, they're, I like scaffolding up somebody's understanding, whether it be math or, or, or reading, it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, but I, I like building somebody's intuition for something. And then I like asking question that I expect to have to work with, work with the student to, to have them find the answer. 
and then they just know it because they put things together that I didn't even realize they had begun putting together. So basically, keep a mental note of the topic discussed and then go back to it later. And it is especially not necessary to know a lot about the topics discussed. Yes, so Kevin, you, I mean, as much as you can, understand what you're reading. I also have to go very, very soon. Um, do your best to understand what you're reading, but this test is really fast, so you do need to be aware of time, and with that in mind, skimming a little bit. And what I mean by that is I like reading until I know what they're about to say. If, I, if they say, um, you know, Susie Pickles, you know, grew up in this town, and her father, oh man, her father, and then it, I, clear, I can see, okay, it's talking about her father for five lines, great, now I know about her father. I'm going to skip all of that, I'm not going to read it, because I know where it is. And then the questions will lead me where I need to go. Like, I don't need to know about her father unless they ask me a question. And then I can read it for the first time more, more um, focusedly. Um, or you can go to the questions first, see what line numbers they tell you to go to sometimes, and you can highlight those line numbers or bracket them or whatever, so you know when you go through the, the first time you read to look at those more specifically. Um, that's actually Brady's approach. He can explain it a little bit better. But... When you're reading, build a mental map of where they talk about stuff. You want to know what they talk about, at least what they're talking about for each part of the passage, for every passage when you read. And then when you go to the questions, you can figure out exactly what they're saying. Uh, I find the natural sciences section the easiest for me. Great, then you don't have to worry about it. Just do that one first. I would say do that one first. If the literary narrative one is harder, that's going to be harder. We can talk about that tomorrow. I do need to go. But have a good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Um, Sid, congrats on being almost done with school and things like that. Why doesn't this work? All right. Good night.